Hi, I'm Chris from the Baker Lab, and today I would like to give an introduction to the alignment tool. The alignment tool is a powerful way to align structures and make decisions that automated methods frequently struggle with. First, I'll go through some background in the concept behind the alignment tool, and then I'll explain how to use the tool to make custom alignments. And finally, I'll explain how to use the tool to thread a protein. For proteins, form is function. Stated again in a different way, a protein's 3D shape directly dictates its function. As proteins evolve, many proteins retain the same or similar function as their ancestors, and to do so, they must retain a similar shape. It is not uncommon for two proteins to only share, say, 30% of their primary sequence, but still have the same fold and the same function. But this is not always the case, as some proteins with 30% identity have very different folds and different functions. This makes it difficult for automated methods to predict which proteins are structurally related and which are just background noise through sequence information alone. This is where the alignment tool comes into play. The alignment tool allows players to take the sequence of an unsolved protein, say one that is important in cancer or a CASP target, and thread it onto a protein of known structure which is predicted to be related based on sequence alignment. More importantly, the alignment tool allows players to repeat this process for multiple predicted relatives, allowing players to use their spatial intuition where automated methods frequently fail. It is even possible to do partial threading of a protein, where parts of different sequences can be mixed and matched into one hybrid alignment. The alignment tool is located under Action in the original interface, and under Main in the Selection interface. I'm more comfortable with the Selection inter interface, so I'll be using it in this demo, although the alignment tool works in both interfaces. When the alignment tool is opened, it will show several amino acid sequences. The top sequence is the protein of interest, in this case, a CASP target. Though the sequence of this protein is known, the structure is not. The sequences below are three proteins that are predicted relatives and have known structures. These three potential relatives are called templates. The alignment score which predicted them uh, to be related to the CASP target can be seen on the right. As a quick note, this alignment score is calculated very differently than the way Foldit scores proteins. A high alignment score means a higher degree of confidence that the templates are related to the cast target. From here, it is possible to build a manual alignment by shifting either the CASP's target sequence or by shifting a template sequence. Select an amino acid in the alignment tool by clicking on it and shift the alignment by dragging the amino acid with the mouse or by using the arrow keys. It should also be noted that if one amino acid is selected, moving it can shift other amino acids in the alignment. This is because these sequences are based on real proteins. If amino acid 35 moves, amino acid 36 may also have to move to keep 35 in front of it. Shifting the sequence can also create gaps in the alignment, where the template has extra amino acids that do not align with the cast target sequence, or vice versa. If the proteins really are related, this is where insertions or deletions occurred during evolution. Alternatively, these gaps could be artifacts of aligning unrelated proteins. While these alignments might not seem to be related to the protein structure, they have corresponding structures saved and folded, which will come into play during threading. Getting the right alignment will put the protein much closer to its native structure. Multiple amino acids may be selected at once by using shift and clicking. Also note that as amino acids are selected in the alignment tool, they are also selected on the protein structure and vice versa. As you move the sequence around looking for good alignments, Notice that the alignment score updates for each alignment, and that this can be visually assessed by the width of the white line below the cast target sequence. A maximum width line shows that the aligned amino acids are the same. A medium-sized white line means the amino acids are both either hydrophilic or hydrophobic. And a thin white line means the two amino acids have side chains with dissimilar properties. If multiple templates are being compared at the same time, the white line is an aggregate for all of the sequences, which is useful for finding conserved regions between many sequences at the same time. During the process of editing alignments, there are a few useful tools. First and foremost is undo and redo, and the reset button, which resets the alignments to the computer-generated one. It is also possible to toggle how the amino acids are displayed. The default option, type, chooses colors based on amino acid identity, while hydro colors amino acids by hydrophobicity. It is also useful to put templates in the reserve so things don't get too cluttered visually. 
Last thing for making alignments, it is possible to tell the alignment tool to align a gap in the cast target sequence and the template sequence at the same time. Aligning a gap to a gap doesn't mean anything, so the alignment tool will automatically move to close the gap, which can cause non-selected sequences to appear to move unexpectedly. Now for threading. To select a template to thread, click the checkboxes located to the left of the template of choice and thread using the padlock button in the upper left corner of the alignment tool. While the padlock button is activated, checking a template will thread the cast target sequence over the template. The backbone of the template structure is shown as spheres and lines, and the sequence of the cast structure is a ghost of whatever viewing options are presently selected. Gaps in the sequence are artifacts of the alignment, which are shown as blue bands between amino acids that need to be continuous. Toggling off the padlock button allows the user to activate other templates and see how they differ from the current thread without actually rethreading them. Since there is a lot going on visually, it can sometimes be helpful to change the viewing options to see what is most important. The folded scores just after threading tend to be bad for two reasons. First is because of the side chain clashing. A quick shake can clean most of these up pretty quickly. The other reason is because gaps, shown in blue, in the protein score very, very poorly and need to be fixed before the score counts. Wiggle, pull, and rebuild to try to get the ends of the backbone the right distance from each other to close. When they are the correct distance, the band will change color and by clicking it, the gap will be closed. Even when closed, more wiggling, pulling, and rebuilding will probably be necessary to improve score. On a technical note, closing gaps is difficult for automated methods and is another opportunity for human intuition to do what computers cannot. To hybrid thread, use the two buttons on the right side of the alignment tool which look like pieces of paper with writing on them. Select a region to partially thread, then press the partial thread button closer to the alignment. Pressing the other button will undo this partial threading region. Make sure the padlock button is switched on, then select the alignment you want to choose with the activate alignment button. Repeat this process down the length of the protein, choosing the alignment that looks best. This has been a demonstration of all the features in the alignment tool. Uh, my recommendation on how to use the tool is to simply to experiment with it and see what works and what does not. Since this tool is still under development, it's important that you guys give us feedback on the features you like, the features you would like to see, and the things that frankly just don't work. Good luck on this year's CASP and happy folding!